Um, and thank you for inviting me. Um, when I walked in the room just now, I was just sort of um, taken back by the amount of people that's here. Um, people always say to me that you must get used to this, you must get used to standing and talking. And the mere fact that I've been sort of catapulted into this position is not something I ever thought I'd dream of ever um, doing. But because Stephen was very precious, and the fact that how he died, and the reason behind, I felt, how he died, it was important for me to make sure that his voice was, was never died with him. And in fact, this year, um, it was quite important for me to go over to America to see the inauguration of Barack Obama, because it was something I thought would never happen in my lifetime, that this, that you come, that you see a black person, um, in fact, to be the president of the most, um, I guess, say, influential um, country in the world. And for me, that was just so important. And at times, um, when I came back, I wanted to use that as a way of talking to young people, especially for young black men, to say that there's a future. Um, before I start all this, I was going to say that last night I went to see a play um, over in Barking. Because I wasn't sure what the, what the play was about, but I was when sitting there, it was about a young man that was killed. He was 16, and you had four young black men um, doing a, a drama around it. And one was a brother, one was a cousin, one was a friend, and the other was, a, um, you could say, like a, a gang leader. But when you look at these young men, there's nothing different about them. And what, for me, was the story that, that they, were, they were telling was about how this young man come to lose his life and the reason around it and how he got into, got into this gang and how his brother ended up in prison and he was trying to steer his brother away from getting into crime. But somehow that didn't happen and this young man got killed. And so coming to see young people today, it's sort of, a lot of things have come home to me. Because even though it's so long since Stephen's death, it's still very fresh for me. And most of you probably um, were, were never born when Stephen was killed, even to understand, even to know the story. And this year um, was the 10th anniversary <coughs> of the publication of the inquiry that looked into Stephen's murder. And so part of what, I need, what I'm talking about is, is around, some of that around the inquiry, what happened and the outcomes of it, and how I felt over the years, because um, I will start off by saying it's um, 16 years, one month, since the devastating murder of my son Stephen. The sheer brutality of his wound should have shocked the police into action to track his killers. But he was black, and in their eyes his death did not warrant the same urgency <coughs> as that of a white person. In the years that followed, our family had to fight all levels of the British justice system, in which, which has repeatedly denied us justice for his death. It took the establishing of the public inquiry into the, by the new Labour government in 1997 to expose the incompetence, the institutional racism that we experienced at the hands of both the police and the justice system. At the, this year marks the 10th anniversary of the publication of the Stephen Lawrence Inquiry, and it represents when it was presented to Parliament in the House of Commons, it was welcomed. And several, and several um, reviews remark, uh, marking the 10th anniversary, such, that, such as the academics, this year, such as the academic um, produced by Portsmouth University, examining the shortfalls in police intelligence and the investigation into Stephen's murder, and what changes, if any, had taken place in the last 10 years. Unfortunately, I'm not able to stand here before you today to say that with full confidence that we are living in a renewed and reformed society in which the same mistakes would not and could not be repeated. The inquiry came about at the time when, through years of over-policing and discrimination, confidence in the police service was severely lacking within Britain, within the black community. The inquiry into Stephen's murder put the British, 
for the British justice system under public scrutiny in a way that no other case had before, exposing, exposing not only the, the, the many flaws of the Metropolitan Police, but also the lack of respect that they showed towards the black community that they should have served. The Lawrence Inquiry vindicated that we, the family, had been, what we, the family, had been saying all along, namely that the racism and the incompetence of the police service was the root or the root cause of the gross miscarriage of justice. In the early days after the publication, some of the police officers tried to undermine the inquiry. There were some who said that the recommendation from the inquiry <coughs> injured them in their work, feeling unable to stop individuals in fear that they would be labelled as racist. The fact that was some officers did not see the need to change their behaviour towards the black community. And just to make this particular point, what saddens me today is that for 16 years after Stephen's murder, there's still no longer, that, that, there's, that, 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 that there has been no long-term drop in stop and search within the black community. Today, black, uh, black people are seven times more likely to be stopped and searched than white people. <coughs> this is not progress. And in spite of this, the government has introduced a new method of recording stops to cut back on paper on paperwork, which they believe will further take away holding police officers to account for their action. This can only lead to further um, decrease in trust and confidence in the police service and hinder the, the effective monitoring across the justice system. One of the main recommendations of the inquiry was to develop, a, was to develop the quality of training of the police service. Since then, a lot of work has been done to improve skills and leadership at the leadership level. The question we, we need to ask ourselves is how much impact has this had on the work of the officers on the beat? Those officers who have regular contact with the members of the public would frontline officers react differently today if faced with the same situation on the night of, of the 22nd of April 1993? Would Stephen be dealt with in a way you'd expect an injured man should be? Would they automatically see a guilty black man or would they see a young person bleeding on, on London streets? The most important the most important need is to make sure that you are providing the right service for the community that you serve. This should be the priority. The excuse used is always a lack of funding, funding, funding to stop police from developing, from developing the right service that is appropriate. Over the last 10 years, I have worked with, worked with Metropolitan Police and the government departments independently supporting and implementing some of the recommendations that came out of the Stephen Lawrence Inquiry. I've been encouraged by the work <coughs> that, I, that I recently witnessed when I visited um, the West Midland Police Service with Richard Stone, one of the advisors of the, Lawrence, of the Lawrence Public Inquiry. We were able to see firsthand how the police working in the community had increased the confidence of the community by working closely together. We have also seen the improvement of, of, police, of police investigation through the use of family and officers. Although the role of these officers are still quite blurred <coughs> between supporting the families and investigating team. I've spoken to black families who are saying that liaison officers who are assigned to them are not giving them information as to how as how, the inter as how the investigation is going. The danger here is that black families are experiencing loss and are made to feel as if they're perpetrators rather than victims. Another area I feel particularly <coughs> passionate about, being both a grandmother and a custodian of young people at Stephen Lawrence Centre, are the inquiry, are the inquiry recommendations re relating to prevention and the role of education department and the wider problems in the education system as a whole. 
only a few months ago, the study from Warwick University concluded that black Caribbean pupils are subject to institutional racism in English schools. Today, fewer than 3% of head teachers are from the black community and ethnic minority background. Only 5% of teachers. What worries me is the relation of these figures to those of the, of the exclusion rates of black children. In London alone, 80% of the excluded boys are black. As with the police force, the education department must be, must be representative of the people that they serve. There must be implement, implementation of awareness to address these issues, to stop young people falling into crime, into criminal justice, and, and later into crime. As important as it is to acknowledge that the positive steps that has been taken since the inquiry, we are in danger of becoming complacent by lingering over the success and forgetting the obstacle that we must still overcome. As yet, as to as and as yet, as the late of, of late, I see the government's agenda moving from the issue of race to make to the mainstream equalities and more socially acceptable notion of diversity. The question we should be asking is, have we fully addressed the issues surrounding race? Do the police, do the police force and other public, public bodies think that they have achieved their goals of addressing institutional racism? Could they be accused of the same today? It was only announced a few weeks ago um, that the central target of, of ethnic minority recruiting for police police force that they are dropped and um, that they are being dropped and why when the target for 2009 was seven percent uh, represent representation and it has taken 10 years for us to get to 4.1 percent why is it deemed appropriate to have to put um, to pull out of race when we were, when we've only half run when we've only half run. I was also disheartened by the merging of the Commission for Racial Equality to the, new, to the New Equality and Human Rights Commission. And my views are shared by many in the black community. I see this as watering down of race relation at a time when race really needs to be on the agenda. I'm told by having Trevor Phillips as a chair we have a champion to address the race issue. This does not assure me that the needs of the black community will be represented. What would assure me would be that we were given a statutory race committee and the needs of ethnic minority communities will be, were likely to be met <coughs> by the up and coming single equality bill which was announced last week. The government needs to recognize and acknowledge the economic and social and cultural contribution that the minority communities have made throughout this country's history. They need to have a step, they need to take a step to ensure that these communities that have, have shaped modern Britain are not left behind and treated like second, second class citizens. I have listened over the years to many plans and targets around race, diversity and, and dis disproportionality. Sometimes our collective failure to make, difficult, to make difficult choices has the greatest impact on those who, who are at most vulnerable. And so we must step up to take up, we must step, step, step out of our comfort zone and ask a question which some would not have, would not have us asked. More than ever, there's a great urgency to bring about change to ensure that our society is fair and fit for purpose to all, not just a privilege, but not, not just a privilege um, for those from, from a particular race or creed, but those who reside in, reside in the periphery too. All deserve to have access to service and to justice in this progressive society that would be the most fitting legacy to Stephen.